there's a pandemic going on. It's been going on for as long as the human race has been here. The disease of the mind. Passion, aversion, delusion, or greed, anger, and delusion. And we've lived with these diseases so long that we take them for granted. It's a normal way it is in the human race. You go up to the heavens, they've got passion, aversion, and delusion too. But that doesn't mean that these things are not diseases. They cause a lot of trouble. They cause a lot of illness. They cause a lot of pain. And we want to get to a place where they're not normal anymore. That's what the practice is for. And as with any treatment, first you learn about the causes of the disease, and then you attack the disease at the cause. And this is an old-fashioned treatment. Nowadays, of course, you go to a doctor and you expect to get some pills and a shot, and the doctor cures the disease for you. But in the old days, the doctor would give you a list of ingredients for the medicine and then send you out. You had to find the ingredients, put them together, take the medicine yourself. And this is that course of treatment. The Buddha gives you a list, eight factors in the Noble Path, and he tells you how to find them, how to give rise to them. But it's up to you to do the actual cure. So we're working on concentration right now. And anything that comes up that would pull the mind out of concentration, recognize that as one of the symptoms of the disease. You want the concentration to be normal. In other words, a mind that's centered, a mind that's still, with a sense of well-being here in the present moment. You want that to be your normal scene, a state of health. Everything else is a germ for a disease. And you have to build up your resistance. You do that with your discernment. You learn how to talk to yourself when these things come in, say, and they may be appearing in the mind, but you don't have to lay claim to them. You can let them go, let them go. Because it's our acts of attention that feed these things. So you learn how not to pay attention to them. That won't stop them from coming, but it stops them from taking over. This is the first course in your, in your treatment as you meditate. Prior to that, of course, there were the courses in generosity and the courses in, courses in virtue. You have to look at them all as treatment for the diseases of the mind. Generosity treats the disease of selfishness. Virtue treats the disease of carelessness. In other words, you don't care about the consequences of your action, that's going to get you into big trouble. It's an act of heedlessness, which the Buddha said is the source of all things that are unskillful. Now we're here training the mind. Having a good place to stay is your medicine. And then learning to talk to yourself about things that come up, and learning how to talk wisely to yourself about things that come up. That's going to be your act of building up your resistance. So it's a complete course of training, complete course of treatment that we've got here. But as I said, it's like the old-style doctors where you had to do some of the work. If the Buddha could have treated everybody's diseases, made them all go away, he would have done that. But he realized that the best he could do was to set out the course of treatment and inspire people to follow. Because as he said, it leads to a genuine health. But it's the kind of health that you can't show to anybody. And John Mahabo once said, if you could take nirvana out to show to people, they wouldn't want anything else. So we have our bits and pieces of descriptions here and there to remind us that th this kind of health is available, it is possible. And to learn how to recognize what is your normal slushing around in your mind as a disease. So that you feel inspired to take on the course of treatment and see it all the way through.